participants here. Oh, God. Okay, there's a okay, there you go. Please unmute. Please unmute the club. Oh, wait, are they? They don't look muted anymore. Okay, maybe. Some people might want to just stay on mute. That'll have to do. Okay, they're unmuted now. Where's the camera? There's the camera. Yeah, I yeah. can, yeah, I can okay. hear you now. Yep. Okay, we can hear we you, you now. now. We couldn't hear you. Did it go? I pressed the move forward button. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's it. It's not right. bright enough, so I can't see it. Hey, I think you're good yeah, now. We can hear you talking. It's right there. Okay, now you can see what you're doing. Okay. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> the competition okay. uh, was a couple of weeks ago online. And it took uh, somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours. And I've just been told to. What? You can't share the screen. I don't know. You're not. You're not. Oh, Let's share the oh, screen. Oh, hang on. Yeah, you're right. We're not sharing the screen. Let me go. Yes. I saw it on the screen. Oh, you want this one? No, no, no. This okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> Just hit F. I did. There we go. Okay. As I said, it took a long time to do the competition. And I've been informed that we need to be try to try to be quick here. I will do my best. So we'll start right out with the apprentice class. That's the uh, everybody decides what class are in themselves. This is the sort of the beginners class. And uh, in the apprentice class, the close up category, second place goes to Kathy Jackson. Kathy here. And the, um, well done, Kevin. In the apprentice class, first place goes to Tracy Reyes, Reyes, Tracy Reyes for Bel Air Beauty. And Tracy, I appreciate, but your two images came in right one after the other. I don't know how the software does that. Uh, we've been assured with the new software we're moving to, it won't do that. We'll see what happens. In the apprentice uh, class, the people category, first place, Tracy Reyes again for Dancing Warrior. I think that's all I got for you, Tracy. She gets two entries and she won with both of them. The next uh, entry is in the apprentice class in the twilight category. This was our category X this time. Maggie Finneran is Sola di Tropea. How's my Italian? No better than it was in the competition. In the intermediate, uh, that was the last of the apprentice classes. Now we're going to move on to intermediate. Oh, wait a minute. We have one here. Here's the Sola de Tropea. Uh, Maggie also had uh, this one here, which was uh, Colina, uh, Tonalis Casarea. That's pretty in yeah, Twilight. And then she had the uh, Isola de Tropea. In the intermediate class now, we're, we're moving intermediate uh, in uh, the animal category. First place goes to William Jakobson, Chicks at an Open Bar. Very imaginative, thanks. Um, in the intermediate uh, class, the close-up category, second place goes to Carlos Osegueda. Did I get that right? Carlos, are you here? Well, Carlos... <laughs> 
I think I had trouble with the name. The title of this is Epiphylum Orchid. And I think I'm pronouncing that right. E-P-I-P-H-Y-L-L-U-M. Epiphylum Orchid. In the uh, intermediate uh, class, first place goes to the same guy, Carlos Osagueda, and this one is Placocactus. Um, in the intermediate uh, class now, in the people category, third place to Stephanie Billings, ready to rumble. Second place in the intermediate uh, class, people category, Thomas Jackson, Egyptian feather, Egyptian feather. Egyptian. Thomas here? Thomas is at the beach. Well, and I think I know who he's with. Intermediate okay. class, the people category, first place, Heidi Wilson for the Renaissance Musician. In the intermediate class, people category, first place. I'm sorry. We're in the places category now. To Joe Rosales, ancient bristle pone, bristle pone pine tree. Joe here tonight? No? Very good, Joe. Okay. In the intermediate uh, class, places category, third place. Thomas Jackson, Singapore Flyer. And in the intermediate class again, places category, first place, Stephanie Billings, A View from the Park. Wait a minute, I missed. <laughs> that wasn't the park you were at. There's your park. The one I missed was Heidi Wilson. Also, there you go. Heidi had uh, Bombay Drive-In. Different kind of park. My wife is looking at me saying, slow down. Okay. <laughs> In the intermediate, oh, we're ready to move on to intermediate twilight, category X. Second place uh, in intermediate goes to Dan Otter, Amino. And first place in the intermediate category goes to Dan Otter also, the Narjana, excuse me, Naranja, Naranja. That was a very nice uh, boy like picture. Now we move into the advanced class in the animal category. Honorable mention goes to Ann Kramer. Gray greatness in white. Gray greatness in white. And of uh, his. There you had to tell me to do that again. I got in trouble the last time. I will make no political comments about that. Uh, there's gray greatness in white from Ann Kramer, who uh, lives in Washington State. So, congratulations, Ann. In the advanced category, Advanced class animal category, honorable mention, Judith Sparhawk for green winged teal. And in the advanced uh, class animal category, third place, Wayne Purcell, Jackson Chameleon. Second place goes uh, to our Washington neighbor, Ann Kramer, Twilight Hunter. Okay. Now we're going to jump across the other side of the country for the advanced category, advanced class, animal category, first place, Dorothy Cunningham, who lives in Tennessee, 
white pelican. In the advanced class, close up category. Stan Fry, she found her pot of gold. That's close up. That's nice. And in the advanced category, people. Third place, I'm sorry, honorable mention, Bruce Herwig for joy. In the people category advanced, uh, Michael Graves, the vintage oarsman. Michael here tonight. Okay, there was a vintage oarsman. Second place goes to Brian Spears for Homeless Study One. In the uh, advanced category or advanced class people category, first place. Wayne Purcell, Walter Wood, Indiana, 1972. In the advanced class, category of photojournalism, first place, Brian Spears, African Queen. In the advanced category, places. Third place goes to Rick Strobaugh, Natural Arch and Waterfalls. Natural Arch and Waterfalls. That's that one, so I must have missed one here. Yeah. Well, that one was to this guy named, the other one is Bruce Horwig, who got uh, uh, honorable mention for Ruins Under the Stars. Well done, brother. And there we go, there was Natural Arch and Waterfalls. I bet that was in Iceland, wasn't it? Okay, the, uh, in second place in places, Dave Garner, Umbrella Alley in Redlands. a great example of being in the right place at the right time. It just rained. They had just put up new umbrellas. Perfect timing. <laughs> in the advanced uh, class places category, first place, Jim Hendon for Spring Thaw, Cedar Breaks National Monument. No Jim tonight. In uh, open miscellaneous advanced, honorable mention, Russell Trezera, Island Lake. We're going to have to do a high key one sometime. Well, as Adam said to Eve, there seems to be a leaf missing. And uh, this was Cheryl Callanan, purple and gold, third place. Okay. Second place to Judith Sparhawk, lavender and rust. There's lavender and rust. Yep, that's lavender. There's lavender and rust. Okay. First place goes in the open miscellaneous category. 
to the Owens Lake Bird Festival by Jim Hendon. And in the twilight category, this is Golden Pond at Twilight by Dorothy Cunningham. Well done, Dorothy. Third place. Who's that guy? Oh, that would, oh, I don't know how to do that. Go back, full screen. Yep. Thank you. All right. Mine is Somebody's at Home. That's mine. One of Frank's classes, by the way. He dragged us all out there before the sun came up and worked with the people in the house to turn all the lights on. Fantastic experiment. Experience. Okay, one more in the place category. No, the twilight category. Second place to William Bertram, Twilight, Redondo Beach Pier. And first place goes to Michael Graves for Route 66 at dusk. Best of show. Yeah, drum roll. There we go. It goes. Uh, this is the one that scored the highest points of all of the images and all of the classes and all of the categories. And. Uh, one time somebody asked, I think it was maybe our president, said, how come it's always birds? And I said, well, birds are all, our, our best photographers are all bird photographers. Well, let's, maybe this, maybe we could get a landscape photographer to win something. So we did. One of our best landscape photographers is Rick Strobaugh. <laughs> well done, Rick. It's all yours. Oh, you can have the mic. All right. Thank you, Carl. And uh, thank you, Carol, for putting together all of those ribbons. Uh, as those of you who uh, know, uh, have, if you haven't heard yet, uh, Frank Peel uh, passed last Wednesday. Uh, services are going to be in uh, down in El Cajon on Friday, uh, the 5th. Information was sent out. It's in the photogram uh, for the details. We are going to be dedicating uh, next month's photogram to Frank. So if you have memories you'd like to send in, uh, photos that you'd like to send in. Uh, we're also going to be dedicating our next month, August 19th meeting to, uh, to Frank. And we're going to do our own little uh, celebration uh, of Frank, his life, his contributions since the late 80s uh, here to the Redlands Camera Club. I think anybody who knew him has a story about how he's encouraged, us, uh, encouraged you on your photographic journey. Uh, he was one of the reasons I joined. And uh, it was it was great to know Frank for the little bit uh, that I did. All right. Uh, did you put your your uh, PowerPoint on a stick? Do we have that? All right. Bring it on up. And then uh, Wayne, were you going to do some introductions? I think we're ready to move on. So our president has uh, asked this committee that uh, develops the programs to do three or four a year that require you to bring a camera. <laughs> so uh, we can be, we're the camera club, so let's bring our cameras and learn how to use them. So uh, that's what we did tonight. Uh, last January, I, I took my grandkids to the uh, 
super reptile show in Pomona, and I came away with a card that said uh, the, the uh, Invertebrate uh, Society of Southern California, and I thought, well, we can get them to bring some bugs. <laughs> and so uh, that's what, that what we've done tonight. Um, their their uh, mission statement is kind of interesting. Uh, they are a community of invertebrate enthusiasts, breeders, cons conservationists, and researchers in Southern California dedicated to cultivating and conserving spineless creatures. So, <laughs> so uh, we also found out that they're also very good uh, photographers, some of them. Uh, Rachel Landis is the gal who is going to be uh, doing the first part of this program. She lives in Pasadena. And uh, she and William came all the way from Pasadena, and uh, we we're fortunate they came. There was a big wreck on the freeway, so <laughs> glad they did. And uh, she's going to introduce uh, some of her people. She's a graduate of Brooks Institute of Photography. Uh, there's another one. Over there. Yeah, which uh, is is no longer, but it was the Harvard of photography schools, I think you might say. So. Uh, Let's uh, give a big warm welcome to uh, Rachel Landis. Hello, everyone. Uh, I haven't done public speaking in a while, so I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. So just, just bear with. <laughs> um, so we're from the Invertebrate Club of Southern California. I'm actually going to have you come on over here, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about what we do and who we are. It's not designed to amplify, so you need to speak loud. Speak to the back of the room. Uh, yeah, so we're just a bunch of people who love... Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm my bad. <laughs> I'm William. Um, I'm her boyfriend. Um, uh, here to tell you a little bit about the club and a little bit for moral support. Um, and I, I'm not... She's the photographer. I'm the bug guy. I have my little point and shoot, but that's as far as I go. But I love all creatures, um, especially those that, uh, especially those that crawl and uh, slither and that sort of thing. But anyway, um, so we're members of the Invertebrate Club of Southern California, um, which was founded, I believe, in 2020 or 2021. But um, we. Uh, we do hikes we we breed invertebrates we keep invertebrates um we attend trading shows to sell invertebrates um we're interested in conservation um in just learning more about them we do community outreach to basically show the world the bugs are actually really really cool um so i, I don't know what you all think about invertebrates but maybe by the end of today um, maybe if you don't like them, maybe you'll like them just a wee little bit more. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. My, my emphasis is mostly on, um, I actually don't keep any, we don't keep any invertebrates. We love going out and finding them in nature and photographing them there in the wild, so to speak. Um, so that, that's, that's our emphasis. Um, and there are actually some cool native species here that you could find around here as well as non-native ones. But, um, anyway, so I'll pass it off to Rachel. Yeah, I'm the photographer. He's the bug guy. Any any bug questions? If you guys are curious, please go to him. It's not sharing. Stop sharing. Uh, Hang on. No, you don't touch it, Rod. It's not on your side. When you unplug it, it's good. Couldn't have touched the TV. Okay. I'll work on the TV. Work on. Okay, 
You folks seeing it at all? No. Okay, let, let me get an unplug and screw it up. Oh, it's plugged in. Is this a Samsung? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, well, actually, uh, well, this is perfect for what you wanted to talk about. Okay, um, so hello again, my name is Rachel. Um, I guess I'll, I'll go into a little segment here. I was, uh, I'm gonna teach you guys about bugs and I'm gonna teach you about uh, how to photograph them, specifically how to utilize macro photography. Um, so I wanted to start off with like a little bit of the equipment I'm seeing, I was actually, I wasn't quite sure uh, what to expect when I came here. So it's very pleasant to like see everyone with like their equipment and their tripods and their lenses ready to go. Um, so going into the equipment, I I'm gonna talk about two things today. I'm gonna talk about the equipment uh, that one can use um, all the way from a D DSLR to a phone, um, as well as uh, the approach to photographing these bugs today. Um, so starting off strong, we have the DSLR. Um, I'm working today with a Canon 7D uh, with a 100 millimeter macro lens. Um, this is definitely always going to give you the best quality, um, you know, uh, all, you know, the most information to work with, especially if you're working in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, and of course it's, always best to when you're able to control your aperture, your ISO and your shutter speed. Um, but then we have stuff like a point and shoot. Hey, there you go. We have the, the point and shoot, um, which also like, I'm sure some of you guys have this at well, sometimes we don't have our DSLRs on hand. This is uh, very handy for on the go. Um, the focal length on this because it's cut so short, uh, you can get in super close with this particular type of camera and it still gives you amazing detail. This is his, uh, his, uh, what would you call? But even, you know, even without being a photographer, like that's his item of choice and it takes amazing pictures. Um, and then I was also going to talk about some people just have their phones or maybe you don't have time for either one of those things. You just got to whip out your phone. Um, we actually brought a little add on a little clip on a macro lens for your phone. Um, I suggest all of you give it a try. I, I, know, I know you got your really fancy equipment. I'm actually really excited to ask you guys about all your stuff, um, but give it a try. Uh, this can actually capture pretty cool stuff. It can get in really close and even though it's just a phone, like it, the way it enhances the abilities of just that is just amazing. Um, and then of course the last piece of it, oh, hello, yeah. Macro lens, uh, Amazon, it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, the brand is Zenvo, uh, can magnify up to 15 times. Um, you know, it's like, it's like nothing like a DSLR, obviously, but you know, if I like don't have even my little other camera, you know, I can just flip this on and then I'm good to go. Zenvo with a, with an X, yeah, uh, X E N V O. It also came with. I don't use it as much, but it also came with a wide angle lens and like a little light and other attachments you can put on your phone. So it's like basically. All, you know, really ups your game with just a phone. So yeah. But... Oh, excellent. Oh, cool. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last thing I just wanted to talk about as far as equipment goes is just uh, handheld versus tripods. I noticed a lot of you have tripods. Tripods are wonderful, uh, especially when you're shooting in low lighting. 
um, just to stabilize versus like handheld when maybe you have a little bit of a shake or you're working in that low lighting where it's just not, it's, it's not going to come out. So definitely a tripod. Uh, now I wanted to uh, get into the approach, uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, I've actually had the pleasure. I was looking around. I think I've, I think I've photographed all these bugs before. So I'm the expert. Um, so let's talk about the very first thing you're going to do, or I want you to think when you're approaching these animals is what is the texture of this invertebrate? Is it shiny? Is it fuzzy? Is it matte? Because this is really going to determine what kind of lighting you're going to use. Now, of course, we have everything set up today, so things are super easy today. But um, for instance, you know, when I'm out in the field, I use natural light. Um, I know others will use uh, flashes, such as cue flashes or diffused lighting. Um, that is definitely always going to be your go-to for a shiny bug. Um, and here you can see my beautiful shiny ants. These are called shiny acrobat ants. Uh, it does have shiny in the name, and you can see why. Um, these, this was taken with a flash, a diffused flash. Um, it's definitely the best for it. You see that beautiful highlight that goes all along the bug, really um, emphasizing the shape, the color. We also have, you know, going to something simple, if I can get it. Oh no, I can't change it. Help, tech. Okay. Not these ants. What was it? Okay, uh, so I just wanted to bring something that we're all familiar with, the ladybug, also another type of shiny beetle. Um, again, just this was also taken with a flash, uh, just to emphasize, like, look at the beautiful highlight, how it's like, just really emphasizing, like, the roundness, the color of this animal, um, versus, like, if you were to take it in sunshine, this is direct sun. The highlight completely changes. Not that it's necessarily bad, because you know, for us as scientists, when we're identifying or naturalists, when we're identifying, um, you know, sometimes this is just what we have to work with. But definitely, I will always say, if you're working with shiny, definitely that that flash is always going to get you, or any sort of diffuse lighting. So I'm talking like a beautiful cloudy day in the shade, or a diffuse flash. That's for your shiny creature there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you're using macro, you're going to be right up in there. You can also um, set it up where your flash is detached, but you can use a control to set it off. So at that point, it really depends on like where you're shooting, what the lighting already is, and you know what or like what feel you're looking for as well. It's it comes down to preference. Um, so then I just wanted to talk quickly about like. Here we have a very fuzzy spider. This is a uh, Phetopus adumbratus. Uh, it has no English name. It's a type of jumping spider. So again, Phetopus adumbratus. Um, these are one of my favorite uh, jumping spiders. This is native to us. Um, this one is a picture of mine. It was taken in direct sunlight just to kind of show a contrast between a very shiny you know, subject versus something soft and fuzzy. You can see how evenly the lighting is distributed along it. Um, but of course, you know, you have those shiny eyes and, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay when I have a little highlight in the eyes. Um, let's see here. So again, it really all depends on like the look that you're going for. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was, oh, oh, I'm sorry, questions. I actually use, well, I can do both. Sometimes I'll use a cue flash, cue flash when it's right on top of my camera. Um, other times I will move it around if like the lighting's just not this or not agreeing with me or if I need to fill in shadows like on some object. You also have to remember you're working with living animals. So they're gonna, luckily today everything's boxed up for you guys or either uh, posed, but these suckers are constant, especially a jumping spider. I'm sure you can imagine he's hopping all over the place and I'm like, get over here. Did I see another hand? Okay. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to just quickly quickly uh, touch on was aperture, um, as I'm sure all of you are familiar with, but just it's so, so important 
aperture when it comes to macro photography. Um, you know, it depending on, you know, what your subject is on, what that background is, maybe it's on a beautiful, pretty detailed flower. And so you would want to close that aperture uh, just to really so you can get not only your subject, but you can also get the detail in the background as well versus what I have right here, an example where my aperture is very wide. I think this was at like f2.8. Um, here, I wasn't so worried about getting every last detail on this honeybee. I just wanted to really like focus on that eye. So I opened my, my aperture and again, depends on the feel that you're going for, but uh, yeah, I think it's that bokeh effect. Let's see here. So speaking of detail, um, I just wanted to talk about detail versus like the overall subject. Uh, so sometimes, uh, and I'm sure you're going to come across it today, we have a really cool lineup of invertebrates for you guys. Um, sometimes you are going to come across uh, something with amazing detail. And there you have to make a decision. So for instance, this is a, a white-lined sphinx moth. Um, if I had taken a picture of the overall moth, that would have been cool. But like, look at that detail. It's like when you get on in there and it almost becomes, you know, becomes abstract. It almost becomes like an art piece. Um, another example is a tarantula, which you guys will be photographing today. Um, this was actually my first time photographing a tarantula for this photo. And when I was photographing, I was doing the overall shot and I was like, yeah, 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 this is really cool. Um, and as I thought about it, you know, I was like, well, you know what, this is my first time. I've never actually seen the eyes on a tarantula. I don't know where they are. I don't know how many there are, you know, let me get on in there. So just another example of just like really getting in there and just showing that like fine detail. Um, again, just another example, this is the abdomen and the leg. Uh, just cool stuff getting on in there, getting really like, cause I know you guys know that it's hairy, but like, I don't know, did you know it was segmented like that? Did you know that there's little like specks of dirt that like get all caught between their hairs. Like, <laughs> and some people don't want to think about that because it's a spider. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yes, just to emphasize the importance of just like getting in there, getting that detail shot. Um, but you know what, let's talk about the overall shot. Uh, so this is a johnson -y jumping spider. I love jumping spiders. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I call them the puppy dogs of the spider world. They are the most aware spider that you will ever meet. They can actually do math in their head when they're jumping. When they jump, they calculate it before they go. Um, they also are the only spider that is, how do I put this? Because spiders are aware, but this guy will look you in the eyes. Amazing creatures. I love them so much. Um, so just, uh, going on with an over, we talked about some detail. Let's talk about like the overall shot. It's really important to like pay attention to your surroundings. I know we have, uh, some flowers and wood and, uh, just sticks like that are going to be like uh, surrounding the invertebrates today. Um, you know, if you look behind the jumping spider's head, you can see on its abdomen, there's that really rich orange color behind it. Um, and at first, when I saw this dude, I was like, oh, there's that detail shot. Let me get in there. Um, and then it took me a moment to take a step back and realize, like, wait a second, there's actually something really cool here. It's illustrating the size of my subject here. And I have these two little tiny clovers just to just to emphasize how tiny this dude was. Um, and then of course, uh, composition too. It's always fun to have something right in the middle. I'm sure you guys know this already, but uh, definitely play with like your backgrounds and your surroundings, like see what you can balance out with that subject. The last thing I wanted to touch on was the background. Um, so when we're working with macro photography and we're talking about that aperture, um, you'll often, you, macro photography, you'll usually have that completely blurred out background, that bokeh effect. And when you lose all the details in the background, that's when, you know, you really got to emphasize working with the color that you have back there. Um, again, I shoot in the wild, so I'm constantly working with colors with my subject. I know it's a little more um, 
what's the word contained this time around. But again, if you guys are in nature, which I'm sure you are, uh, definitely look to see like what is in your background. For, for instance, in this photo, um, it was a beautiful scene. Um, I had the sky, the mountains, and a whole desert spanning out behind these grasshoppers. But when I completely blurred it, I saw that beautiful gradient that was being created behind it. And I, I realized, I'm like, I don't, you know, these, these grasshoppers are already, you know, it's already interesting enough. It doesn't need all that detail in the background. They're so detailed already. So I chose to just completely blur and focus on color. And then lastly, I just wanted to show you guys another example of just background. Um, this is a spiny backed orb weaver. Uh, it's a type of arachnid, it's a type of spider. You may not be able to tell that because he's all scrunched up right now. Um, but, you know, first thing when you look at this insect, or I'm sorry, this arachnid, um, is the shape of it, the design of it. And at first when I was going in there, I was just like, oh yeah, like, let me get this design. Let me, you know, let me focus on this. But it wasn't again until I backed out, I noticed in my background that there were like this plant that it was on was really highlighting or emphasizing the shape of it. Um, so all to say, you know, blurring it out completely and working with color is fun, but also again, just paying attention to your surroundings and uh, really focusing on, you know, the shapes that are going on in your background is cool too. Um, that's pretty much it for me. William, would you like to add anything as far as our bugs go here? Uh, sure. Um, well, just real quick that like a big part of, of photographing invertebrates is having invertebrates to photograph, whether that be finding them out in the wild or having them like in a controlled environment like this. But, um, the, the place that I find my, ha where I find my happy place is in finding the invertebrates and kind of rounding them, rounding them up so she can shoot them. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, it's just, you know, they're like, the, you know, obviously there are dangerous invertebrates be well, you know, painful ones and then dangerous ones like black widows. That's, you know, knowing, knowing what you're, you're looking at and getting into, whether it's a spider or a scorpion or a wasp, that's obviously really important, you know, for your own well-being um but then you know there's like so much to be said about you know what kind you know what kind you're going out to find if you're going out to find them in, in in nature you know do your research you know look find the kind of the kind of invertebrate you want to see and then learn about where it lives learn about its habits and then maybe you can go out and find one so that you know there's a lot of there's a it, it differs depending on the species like what tact tactic you might use whether you might pick it up whether you might, you know, kind of, I can't tell you how many times there's been like a cricket or something jumping around and I'm like, hold still, hold still, hold still. And, you know, trying to get in there so I can photograph it. But uh, yeah, it depends on the species. Some stay still, some don't. But yeah, just all that to say, just kind of know, know your subject, know, maybe know a little bit, you know, how it, how it works. It's, it's biology and know where to find it. And then you can go out and get some awesome uh, shots in nature of invertebrates. Yeah. Do you ever uh, catch and cool an invertebrate that's fast moving so that you can slow it down? You know, you know, I actually don't. And the reason for that is because I am a big fan of, I, I don't, okay, is it in situ or in situ? I never know which pronunciation it is, but um, getting shots like right there on the scene. Like I could you know, bring along a cooler and then like pose it later. But I just, to me, there's something, to me, there's something very pure and like very natural about getting the most like on the spot shot I can. And I know it's just a preference thing. Like, you know, she like- Yeah, I was going to say, I'm I'm the one that cools them down and we'll go. It, it depends on your preference. He's very, like you said, in situ, in the moment. I'm very much like, yeah, I want full control over this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I like, I kind of do things on the fly. I like, I like, Kind of getting that record that memory of what i was doing you know what the circumstances were and if that means honestly i guess that means maybe that means i'm not a real photographer because i'm like you know if i don't get the perfect shot because i did not manipulate this creature that's okay with me and also you have to remember that like um well i get this especially with snakes because i love snakes i photograph them a lot um but uh just that they are living creatures and you need to like there's a time limit on how long you can photograph them because 
you know, you got to let them go at some point. And they, you know, hot flashes and lights can like harm them in some cases. So you really need to be aware of that. Anyway, uh, I, that's about all I have to say as far as that goes. I'm very, very excited to see what you guys come up with um, and what I'm going to come up with, too, because I'm definitely going to get in there with you guys. So uh, without further ado. Kind of pay attention to that uh, as you photograph the bugs. There are some of them that are alive and they're moving around. And if you need help with them moving around or they want to get away from you, call her. Another thing is we have fixed lighting over that can stay on, uh, it's plugged in. There are other uh, portable lights over here that use. The battery powered, so as you're using them, fine, turn them on. You can adjust the power source on them, okay? You can also use your own flashes if you want. Uh, but when you're done with battery powered lights, if you just take a few moments and after you're done, just turn them back off. And the next person that comes along and wants to use them, they'll be able to use them. That's not just spread out over here, okay? So I'm just going to give you a real brief rundown of what we have for specimens. We do have a couple of live tarantulas over here. We're going to be releasing one of them into the big white box over there. The other one is in the smaller white box. It will be in a cage, but I will lift the lid off the cage. Um, next up, we're going to have a uh, praying mantis. Uh, we're going to have some walking stick insects, a whip spider from Africa. Then over here, uh, this table, we have a couple of California scorpions, a millipede, we have some dead specimens that are out in the little sand trays on the table, on an assortment of beetles. And then over at that table, we have a, some wheel bugs. The wheel bug is the largest of the North American assassin bugs. Um, now, the wheel bug is the one bug that I brought here that's live that can fly. If you see it trying to get out of its cage, call me. Do not grab it, OK? It, it is venomous. Um, it's not going to kill you, but it's going to really hurt. So don't grab it. Call me. I'll put a cup over it and put it back. It is unlikely to fly. Just try not to blow on it. Um, but yeah, if you see anything trying to get out, just let me know. Um, we also have a couple of velvet ants in a cup over there. There will be a paintbrush on the table next to them. If you see them attempting to climb up the sides of the enclosure, you can use the bristles on the paintbrushes, gently knock them back down again. But if you see anything at all attempting to escape, let me know so that I can put it back where it belongs. Now, if you'll give me just a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and start removing the uh, lids and putting some of the staging some of the insects up onto the uh, California buckwheat for you guys to photograph. Uh, the plant that's in those vases over there, where I'm putting the stick insect and the California native praying mantis, that is California buckwheat, and that is a great plant around here to find all sorts of bugs because it's a really good food plant for uh, a lot of the ones that eat nectar. The ones that eat there are some that eat the leaves. And it's a great place to find the predators that are going to be hunting for those other bugs that feed on the plant. Yes? Are there, oh, other than the assassin oh, bugs, are there okay. any other species that you have to be careful that okay, um, you don't get harmed? Okay. Well, <laughs> both of the tarantulas are venomous, as are both of the scorpions. They are going to be in enclosures. And so, yeah, and they're not going to like leap out at you or anything but don't try to pick them up. If you see them trying, the scorpions won't be able to climb out of their enclosures. If the tarantula tries to climb out, call me, I'll put her back. Couple of ground rules. If you see a tripod, trip over it. If someone's in your way, push them out. Uh, if you don't have any patience, you're good, right? No, 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 no. Be kind, rewind, have fun. <laughs>